Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. This is Bad Boy Gaming, where we just love to have fun and make cheap old decks that have tricks in them and all that good stuff. If you're not subscribed, by all means, please do. Let's get into what we're all here for. Now, today is probably the biggest day uh, for rare mythic spoilers in a, in a single day so far with Guilds of Ravnica. We have quite a few to go over, so make sure you're buckled in your seatbelts there, all right? Because we're in for a real ride. Let's see. Discovery, Dispersal. On the left here, we got Discovery. Surveil 2, then draw a card. Surveil is definitely a real thing. It's a mechanic, one of the new ones in this set. Uh, for those of you who don't remember or don't know what Surveil is, I'll say it one more time. To Surveil 2, look at the top cards, top two cards of your library, then put any number of them into your graveyard, and the rest on top of your library in any order. Similar to Scry. Dispersal over here on the right, each opponent returns a non-land permanent they control with the highest converted mana cost among permanents they control to its owner's hand and discards a card. This is not going to break in any formats by any means, but yeah, it's probably going to see some play here and there. I just don't know how much. We Dragonauts, this card, oh yes. I made a, I think I have two of these in my turn three win deck. Uh, utilizing Kiln Fiend and just sorceries that deal damage and all that stuff, making things unblockable. Uh, we Dragonauts, this will see play, 100%. It's just going to. It saw play in the last standard, and it's going to see uh, some some play in the standard. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, we Dragonauts gets plus 2, plus 0 until end of turn. You just want to pump this thing up, you know, kind of like the Nivix Cyclops, the Kiln Fiend, and the Wee Dragonauts. They all go together very nicely in a fun little modern deck. Um, but this card, yeah, it's going to see play. Make it unblockable, deal some damage to your opponent, shock them, make them unblockable, bam, bam, pump, pump, pump. Just keep pumping the sucker up and uh, dealing damage. Hatchery Spider, uh, I believe this is a reprint. It's a good old 7-drop, pretty big. I like that it has a reach, at least. Undergrowth, when you cast a spell, reveal the top X cards of your library, where X is a number of creature cards in your graveyard. You may put a green permanent card, converted mana cost X or less, from among them out of the battlefield, put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I guess the card's okay. But it really, it has to fit in certain decks where you can really utilize that ability where you're able to look for a creature card with the converted mana cost X and all that stuff. I, I don't know how much play it's going to see. It is a big 7 drop, but the reach helps it along a little bit. I guess I'm glad it's back. Uh, here we go. Thief of Sanity basically is like a Gonti Lord of Luxury. On the right here, this is a new card, Thief of Sanity. Flying whenever Thief of Sanity deals combat damage to a player. Look at the top three cards of that player's library. Exile one of them face down. Put then, uh, I'm sorry, uh, then put the rest into a graveyard. Uh, for as long as that card remains exiled, you may look at it, you may cast it, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast that spell. Deuce, deuce. This card will see some play, 100%. We are going to see this in our Dimer decks uh, for darn sure. Um, it's great that it has flying as well. I like that Ganti over here. He had Death Touch. I mean, that was fun. And he had a Deuce 3. He wasn't a two Deuce. I mean, they're very similar cards. Not identical, but very, very similar. Oh, boy. Is it just me, or does it seem like this is the set that is just hating on Tron? Um for those of you who don't know what Tron is, I'll get to that in one second. But Unmoored Ego, it's a three drop. Choose a card name. Search target opponent's graveyard, hand, and library for up to four cards with that name and exile them. That player shuffles their library, then draws a card for each card exiled from their hand this way. Well, next is a fate on the right here. Uh, we'll see. Ya. Um, so, next is a fate dex. This is going to be having a, a heavy, heavy impact on unless they decide to run. Uh, a whole bunch of counters and chains up the whole Nexus of Fate deck. Unmoored Ego is going to shut down Nexus of Fate like crazy. So all those people trying to abuse the turn after turn after turn after turn, um, never ending this, uh, Unmoored Ego is going to shut them up. Urza's Tower over here, on the other hand, <clears throat> um, just the whole Urza Tron lands. There's, there's three of them, but once they all get together... They uh, form a lot of ridiculous colorless mana, and then you just drop big creatures like Urza, or uh, not Urza, um, but uh, your Eldrazi creatures and whatnot. Huge, large creatures, basically. Uh, that's kind of how the deck works. And it's, it's, it could be tough to beat, especially when you got a player who's able to dig up their, all their Urza lands, put them down. Well, guess what? Unmoored Ego is going to cripple that. It just This is like the third card, I think, that we've seen. Maybe fourth? No, third card that is just hating on Tron decks. Uh, the first one we saw was, uh, I think, the Goblin. Um, and now, uh, 
we got this guy, and then also uh, the Assassin card. Or was it the Assassin card? Assassin's Trophy, yeah. A lot of hate going on there. Divine Visitation. It's a five rep. I love this card. Enchantment. It's a mythic. If one or more creature tokens would be created under your control, that many 4-4 white angel creature tokens with flying and vigilance are created instead. This card is insane. Like, seriously, this card is going to punish opponents. You splash down a bunch of, like, just 1-1s. One I mean, however, however you want to go about it, pick, pick away. There's just tons of ways in order to create these tokens, even bird tokens. And check out the flavor text. The angels appreciated the offer, but politely declined to eat any bird seed. That, that probably was the one that had me actually laughing out loud. Um, the one flavor text I read. I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> Divine Visitation. We'll see a lot of play, especially in the right decks, geared towards tokens. Um, it's like an, it not, it's not like an anointed procession, but somewhat kind of not really, but it's another way to generate tokens, but big tokens. Okay. Pretty, pretty sweet. A thousand year storm, <clears throat> six drop. This is going to be like storm decks and whatnot. Uh, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, copy it. For each other instant and sorcery spell you've cast before at this turn, you may choose new targets for the copies. Now, I don't think that's going to go for your storm count because I don't think it can be copies uh, that applies to your storm count. But regardless of that, this deck is going to see some play. It is a mythic. Uh, again, I don't know how much play it's going to see. It is a six drop, so that might be a bit steep to cast for some of these decks, the, the red, blue. I don't know. It's going to see play. I'll just stop right there. <laughs> World soul colossus it's an elemental i think it's world soul colossus not 100 percent. world soul colossus enters the battlefield with x plus one plus one counters on it and it has convoke convoke again if you just tap any any creatures let's say you tap two of them it'll help pay for two colorless or a mana in the uh, casting cost there of the chosen color <coughs> corresponding color sorry so, yeah, this is cool. Limited bomb, why not? Other than that, though, yeah, I mean, it doesn't do anything else. It doesn't have trample. It, it doesn't have haste. I mean, it just got convoked. It's, it's essentially a big dummy, so it's going to see only limited play. Sprouting renewal, three drop convoke. Choose one. Create a 2 2 green and white elf knight creature token with vigilance. Or destroy target artifact or enchantment. I like the versatility here. And you can convoke this thing, so, I mean, essentially, you can only. You don't have to pay much for it to cast it. <clears throat> I'm sorry, guys. My voice is being weird. But Sprouting Renewal, yeah, it's going to see some play for darn sure. It stinks it's a little sorcery speed, but what are you going to do? Chance at Glory. This card is ridiculous. This is the card uh, featured. Uh, yeah, Chance at Glory. It's a three drop. It's a mythic. It's also an instant. Creatures you control gain indestructible. Take an extra turn after this one. At the beginning of that turn's end step, you lose the game. This card, you are going to win the game with. That's the thing. <laughs> um, the fact that your creatures all gain indestructible, so you swing away with everything you got. They're going to have to be forced to block. I mean, we got creatures with trample. We got creatures with double strike. I mean, I am so pumped about this card. It's going to be ridiculous. They're all going to survive into the next turn. We take that next turn, we just do it again. I mean, especially with that new card where we just pump it up with auras and stuff. Uh, it's a 1-1, one, one, and it, what's it got? Vigilance, I think Double Strike, and Trample. That's insane, all right? You pump that thing up, and then you drop a card like this. Oh, my gosh. Like, we're this is going to be a really fun, exciting standard. Just a lot of things going on, a lot of trickery, a lot of like, wait, hold on one second. Nope, I just won the game. I'm sorry about that. Like, I think a lot of tricks like that are going to happen in this uh, new standard. So it's probably one of the most, I don't, I don't know how anticipated it was, but it's definitely being highly loved right now. I'm, I'm excited. Beacon Bolt, three drop. Beacon Bolt deals damage to target creature equal to the number of instant and sorcery cards you own in exile and in your graveyard. Mm, if that said... Damage to target creature. If it said to to any target, that'd be cool. But I don't know. I don't beacon bolt. I think it's kind of weak. I like the jumpstart ability, but it's just targeting a creature. I mean, it's, it's more removal, I guess. I just don't think it's that great of a card. But it's not bad. I, I don't see some play, of course, but it's just not that great. Join shields. It's a five drop. Untap all creatures you control. They gain indestructible and hexproof until end of turn. Oh man. 
A lot of indestructible stuff going on here. I like that there's hex proof in this as well. This is an instant, which is even cooler. If it was a sorcery, I would not like this card. Five is a bit steep for this card because there were cards that you drop two and everything gains hex proof. Uh, but this thing also ends indestructible. I think it'll see play. It's going to be one of those one or two ofs, and it's going to trick. Uh, it's going to trick the field, and yeah, this is going to change games for sure. Uh, Siege Worm. It's a seven drop convoke uh, with trample five five. Yeah, limited bomb for sure, and uh, it might even make its way into some decks in normal standard. I don't know. I, I, call me crazy. I think it will. It has potential to do so. Crackling Drake. This one actually came out a few days back. I forgot to include it, though. It's a four drop, again, with that double blue, double red. Crackling Drake's power is equal to the total number of instant and sorcery cards you own in exile and in your graveyard. When Crackling Drake enters the battlefield, draw a card very similar to another card out there. Uh, why I can't think of it off the top of my head right now, I'm very sorry. Should have put it up on the screen for you guys here. Um, but being that it's two blue and two red, that's very specific. I don't know how much play it's going to see. I really don't. Um, I, I don't know, guys. Uh, maybe with Shocklands being back and all that, this might help. Or with the new lands being back. I don't know. I just think it's, it's, a, lot of, it's a lot to cast. It's a, it's a lot to ask. Uh, at least it's got four in its toughness, though. I mean, yeah, it's going to be around. Uh, but let's make some decks with the other card uh, similar to it. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't, can't think of it. Someone in the comment section, please help me. Thanks, guys. All right, we got Wand of Vertebrae over here and Perpetual Timepiece, which essentially Wand of Vertebrae is replacing Perpetual Timepiece. On the left here, put the top card of your library into your graveyard by tapping this artifact. For Deuce, Exile, Wand of Vertebrae, shuffle up to five target cards from your graveyard into your library. Okay. Perpetual, very similar. Put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. Exile, Perpetual, uh, Timepiece. Shuffle any number of target cards from your graveyard into your library. It's replacement right there. How fun. Justice Strike. I think this is a neat card. For Deuce, target creature deals damage to itself equal to its power. Cool removal for only Deuce. Uh, I think this card will see play. I'm pretty positive it will see play. Assurance and Association. I see double ass. I'm just, if you don't see it, there's something wrong with you. Okay, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. That creature gains indestructible until end of turn. Pretty decent. For six, create three, two, two green and white elf knight creature tokens with vigilance. I'm going to play this card just because of its name, but I also think it'll see a fair amount of play as well. Well, these are all the spoilers for today. Let me know your favorite. Which card are you most pumped about? Do you think uh, the three drop mythic is broken? I don't know. There's there's a lot to discuss in these, and uh, I'm looking forward to the next spoiler ones as well. Make sure you hit the thumbs up, guys, and thank you for tuning into Bad Boy Gaming. I'm Joy Moss, PLA.